Greetings, royal family, and welcome to another message by the Honorable Yudhe Wavhe Beit Noon Sophie. Yudhe Wavhe. Now, royal family, this message was taught many years ago by the Honorable Yudhe Wavhe and is being presented to you today by Yahweh's royal priesthood. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Visit us at Yahweh's royal priesthood. www.yahweh144 zero 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 dot com and also royal family join us at the university of yahweh where classes are designed for the godhead visit us at www.universityofyahweh.org also, Royal Family, listen to our weekly podcasts by the University of Yahweh, found on most podcast platforms. We look forward to you being there as well. Enjoy, Royal Family. Now, I've been waiting 6,000 years for this day. So I don't mind waiting a few hours. Go back and read the Bible. I never did forgive Cain. I drowned a lot of folk, but I still didn't forgive Cain. Did you ever see in the Bible where I forgave Lucifer? No, see, Lucifer has to pay. for seducing a third of my angels to go against my government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, I cast him down. I didn't kill him. I just cast Lucifer down to the earth. And he didn't appreciate my mercy. He comes slithering into the garden and warped Eve's mind against my government, who promptly went and warped Adam's mind. And that was 6,000 years ago, see? And then Lucifer's son, he didn't stop at that. He, he turned around and had sex with Eve and come up with Cain, who murdered one of my favorite children. I loved Abel. Abel was righteous. And Lucifer's son, Cain, killed my righteous child. And I didn't kill Cain. Put a mark on him. And I said, if you do, I'm going to still give you a chance. I'm going to show you how powerful I am and how merciful I am. Though you kill one of my favorite sons, I'm going to give you a chance to do well. And if you do well, I'll let you rule over my house forever. Well, Cain's children have been ruling for 6,000 years now and is in charge right now. Are they doing well? They have to, what do you think I'm here for? Pet them on the head? I'm here to set judgment. Cain must pay and Lucifer must pay. And all their descendants must pay. And all of them together can't stop me from setting judgment. I carry a moral force with me. And when I say righteous Abel's blood is crying up to me from the earth. 
And all the righteous prophets since then are crying up to me from the earth. And they're all crying up saying, when, oh Yahweh, will you avenge us? And I have no choice but to reply to them, vengeance is truly mine. And I shall repay. I shall repay. So now it's called Judgment Day. And people are choosing sides. Hmm? So I declare to you, if it seem evil unto you, to serve the Lord Yahweh. To you. Not tomorrow. This day. Whom you will serve. But I want to tell you, as for me, in my house of disciples, we're going to serve the Lord Yahweh and dwell in his house. How long? Forever. Hear what you said? See, we're going, our reward is to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And as I do this, Satan sometimes casts my name out as evil. But Yahweh told me what to do. Matthew 5, verse 11 and 12. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you. They're doing that. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. But I want to tell you, rejoice. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. Not out of heaven, but in heaven. Great is your reward. So I don't have a problem doing this. I rejoice. And I'm exceedingly glad. Every time they put out an article or a story about me that's evil. We who love Yahweh, we're glad. It kind of hurts. Makes you angry sometimes. I know it disturbs you, but see, you just have to give that up. Don't get ulcers. Don't you get one ulcer. <laughs> he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's Lucifer and Cain's children. The opponents of truth. The enemy of truth. And this teaches you how to live. Now, Psalms 29, verse 2. Read. Give unto the Lord Yahweh the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord Yahweh in the beauty of holiness. I am Yahweh in the flesh as the sun. This entire book from Genesis to Revelations is about me. According to Luke 24, 25, 26. In verse 25, you become a fool. If you are slow of mind, if you are mentally debilitated, To believe all that the prophets have spoken. That means that you cannot lay the Old Testament aside. Because that's where the prophets spoke. That means the old preacher is a liar when he tries to say the son of man only wants you to read the New Testament. 
Because here, the son of Yahweh is saying, you are a fool if you are slow of mind to believe all that the prophets have written. All of it. And in verse 27, read. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Now when I come before you, it's just about time now for me to start at Genesis and go all through all the prophets hmm? and the New Testament, all the scriptures and Revelation, all the scriptures and, and not just tell you about myself but expound. Look up expound. Huh? See how well I'm supposed to do this. Because all of this is about myself. Huh? Yeah, see, the entire Bible is about me. If you already knew this, I wouldn't have to tell you this. Expound. Expound. To set forth or state in detail. I must not tell you in generalities. But set forth my argument in detail. Get that down now. So when I go into in, you know, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. See, when I, when I begin to discuss in the beginning, Yahweh created heaven and earth. So when I, be, when I just start, I have to go into the detail of in. I can't set that forth in generalities and leave anything to your imagination. I have to go into end so I remove all doubt as to who I am. Now, I don't care who believes who this is. It's not my point, and it's not my concern. I am simply going to go. See, I already have it written right here in Luke 24, what you are if you don't believe me. You're just a fool. The fact that I can expound from Genesis to Revelation, and in all scriptures, things concerning myself establishes who I am, except to a fool. If you are slow and you have a doubt, you're just a fool. I don't care what school you went to. They should have educated you to recognize your Savior when he came. And if your education did not prepare you to recognize me in the scripture, You've been miseducated, misinformed. You've been misdirected. Expound. Expound to explain. See, <laughs> this scripture here in Luke 24, 27 proves that only I can explain myself. That no matter how smart you are or how deep your faith or belief is, you are unable to explain myself. Now you can go and talk to people about what I explained to you about myself after I explain it. I'm incredible. See that I just raised some questions like. I want you to know I'm the redeemer. So I'm getting ready to challenge your intellect. I, I, and I'm gonna ask you, make a statement that is real and true. Number one, I am the Messiah. I'm the reformer, the regenerator, and the redeemer. I am your savior. I'm the one that all the world has been looking for. I am the Mahdi that the Muslims are looking for. I am the Buddha that the Buddhists are looking for. I'm um, Krishna that the Hindus looking for. I am the one that everybody's looking for. And I am the mighty God. And then I said, now, if I am not, whew, boy, you don't have anything to worry about. Then I lean forward 
And I said, what if I am? Can you afford to disbelieve? I say, I offer the same challenge to the believer and disbeliever. You can't be satisfied in your disbelief. You must prove that I'm not. And it takes the same effort to prove that I am. So if you believe, I'm not satisfied till you prove I am. See, he said, everybody has their time. We don't all wake up the same day of the month or the same year. All of us in here woke up at different times. Does it tell us that Yahweh is active? And you that have not been born yet, I'll be tra travailing with you soon <laughs> for you to be born. And you'll want to be born after a while. When this man get through with you, your enemy and oppressor, when he finished, you'll say, yo, 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 I want to be born. And I'll say, come on out, child. I'm tired of these pains anyway. Come on. Sir. I come to make you God. Psalms 82, 6. Expound, baby, while they turn into Psalms 82, 6. Give me some more. Expound. Expound. Interpret. What? Interpret. See, if I do not interpret Genesis to Revelations in relationship to myself, You'll never know me. I have quite a job. Hmm? Explaining in detail myself from Genesis to Revelation. Point out all the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation concerning myself. And then do what? Interpret. Interpret. Okay. Isn't that something? Psalms 82, 6, read. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. That's who you are, gods. Now let's turn to Isaiah 9 and 6 and see who I am. That's who you are. Now let's see who I am. I don't have any problem with you being gods. Now let's see if you have any problem with me being who I am. Isn't this fabulous? If you want to stay alive, you have to read my yellow book. Two books you have to stay in all the time, or else you'll die. That's this book and this one. Or you'll die. You'd be dead spiritually. You have to read these books. Read. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. See who I am? I don't have any problem you being God's. So there's no need for you to have a problem with me being the mighty God. I'm mightier than you. In fact, you need me to teach you how to be God's. You can't become God's without me. See how priceless Luke 24, 27 is? You cannot know me unless I start with Genesis and tell you, point out in detail to you, interpret for you who I am in all of these scriptures. Now, this, I want you to know, 
I made all things. Where? John 1, 3. John chapter 1, verse 3, read. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Let's look at Psalms 33, 6. I made everything. Psalms 33, verse 6. Read. By the word of the Lord Yahweh were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. I have a mouth, can't you tell? <laughs> by my word. I am the word. John 1 and 1. I am the word. By, my, by the words of my mouth is everything made. John 1 and 1, read. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. Ephesians 3, 9. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. It's a mystery. Go ahead. Which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in Yahweh, who created all things by Yahweh ben Yahweh. Yahweh created me. All things were made by me. I'm, I have to show you this and point this out to you and let you read throughout the book, Old and New Testament, I am the one that did it all. And if you don't believe me, you're a fool. And I'm going and showing you this in detail. Pointing this out to you that you would never have seen this on your own. All things are made by Yahweh ben Yahweh. Not by anyone else. Some things, all things. All things. And all things were made for my pleasure. Revelation 4.11. Revelation 4.11, 11, read. Thou art worthy, O Lord Yahweh, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. You didn't know I was coming? Read verse... Eight. It says, holy, 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 Lord Yahweh Almighty, which was, which is, and is to come. What is so dynamic is you didn't really, really know I was coming. But your grandparents and some of your parents said I was coming. They believed I was coming. So I'm here. I'm declaring. I'm self-declared. Self-pronounced. No one else can go in here and show you I am here but me. Colossians 1.16. Now I want you to understand this well. Not somebody 1900 years ago, this is me. Read. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him 
and for him. Verse 17, read. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. I'm not after anything or with anything. I am before all things. I'm before all that exists. I'm before existence. All that exists, I'm before that. And if your mind is slow to receive this, you're a fool. Don't wonder who you are, so you already letting the world know who you are. You're just a fool. <laughs> Not anybody can say what I say and get away with it. I'm the only creature that can get away with this. I'm the one pointing this out to you. Hmm? Look at Colossians 1, 15, if you don't know who I am. Look at it, just look at it. Read. Who is the image of the invisible God, Yahweh, the firstborn of every creature? See, my father is invisible to you, period, period. I'm visible, I choose to be visible. What would be the difference if my father stood here visible? John 10, 30. I got to keep some places here. This is all too hot. I can't let this get away. You know, I need several fingers. John 10, 30. I and my father are one. So when you see me, Huh? John 14, 9? John 14, 9. So I'm answering those little chump questions, those little cheap shots you have. I'm getting down on that now. I know how you think, so I'm working on that now. I'm pointing myself out in detail. I'm expounding upon all the scriptures concerning myself. Myself, I know myself. I know where I am. So I'm, I'm, I'm letting you see that. Read. Yahweh then Yahweh saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? If my Father be invisible to you, then you can't see me. And I'm standing here, right here in front of you, talking to you. And you swear you can see me. But if you don't believe I and my father are one, you can't see me. That sounds strange, doesn't it? You have eyes, and that doesn't mean you can see me. Now see, this is a thing called perception. <laughs> to see by the dictionary means to perceive. And if your mind is not pure, you can't see me. Matthew 5, 8. Only the pure of mind, only a pure mind will ever see me. Your mind is dirty, you can't see me. Read. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see Yahweh. 
So if your mind is not pure, you're looking at me, I spend time with you, but that doesn't mean you can see me. I am the image. I am the image. I am the image of the invisible Yahweh. I am the reflection of the invisible Yahweh. I am such a perfect image of Yahweh that when you see me, you see him. If you're able to perceive me, you're perceiving him. What would be the difference if I am, since I am his expressed image, I am his ex self-expressed manifested image. I am self-expressed, I am the self-expressed manifested image of Yahweh himself. The invisible Yahweh to you. I am his self-expressed manifested image. Now, what good would it do you to see him look just like me? I mean, that's what express image. What good is it going to do you to see my father looking just like me and don't believe me? <laughs> How can you believe him if you don't believe his self express manifest image? Are you hearing? This is an intellectual challenge, you know, this, this requires a lot of mental gymnastics. <laughs> a fool can't perceive what I'm saying here, it's, it's lost to a fool. You have to be flowing with me right about here. Awake, you have to be awake to get this. Sitting in here asleep will leave you dull. You'll wonder what I talked when you left, when you leave. Can anybody say it would make a difference? I mean, if you see an identical twin and there's no marks or anything to distinguish them, would it make any difference which one you see? You would never know the difference anyway. One walk out and come back in, you wouldn't know which one was A or B. They're identical. You know what identical means? It's identical. It's just the same. I am the self-expressed, manifested image of the invisible Yahweh. You have always said in your life, I would love to see what Yahweh looked like. Hmm? How many say you wish you could see God in your life? Your wish is now true. Why did you wish to see God? To see what he looked like. <laughs> Isn't that a basic reason for wanting to see God? Man, I would love to see God. Why? I want to see what he looked like. How many of you, that's why you want to see God? You want to see what he looked like? Now you know what I look like. You should be happy to know we look alike. How many ever remember reading that Yahweh walked with Adam in the garden? How many ever wish Yahweh had walked with you in a garden? Well, here I am walking with you. You don't have to wish anymore. How many of you wished in your life that God would just look at you? If I could just have God look at me, I'd be so blessed. If he didn't talk to me, if he just look at me, I know I'd be blessed if he just looked at me Well, I'm looking at you. How many ever wish that God would talk to you one day? Just 
talk to you. I wish God would talk to me. Praise God. How many of you have ears? You hear me talking to you? Well, your wish is true. I'm talking to you. How many of you remember that song which says, I know he has the whole world in his hand. And uh, he calmed the raging sea. Huh? He calmed the waters. Huh? Anybody heard about that man that steal the water? And you heard them saying, put your hand in the hand of the man that steal the waters. Remember that? Huh? How many of us, see people were singing and telling you to do it, but you didn't know where the man was. Hmm? You, I mean, somebody was telling you to put your hand in the hand of the man and steal the waters and calm the sea. How many felt that if you could just put your hand in his hand? Woo, wouldn't that be some blessing? If you ever dreamed of uh, if, if God would just put his ever-loving arms around me? Huh? Anybody ever wish that before I came that, oh, if I could, if, if I could just see God and he just wrap, and you used to say, oh, Lord, wrap your ever-loving arms of protection around me and protect me from all hurt, harm, or danger. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I would be here. And if you have such faith, you will be here. It'll be your faith.